Right, hello gentlemen. I wanted to make a, another update about NoFap. I wanted to talk to you guys about my progress and what I've learned from stopping pornography and stopping uh, masturbation. So hold, give me a second. What's that? That's water, right? That's a box of strawberries. And that's a banana. Now, obviously growing up, it's common sense. I knew that eating healthy food is going to benefit you. I knew that all my life. It's, it's common sense. My mum always said it. My nan always said it. My dad, my mum, there's a banana, have a banana, have fruit. And I'd always be like, nah, I can't be bothered. I want to have cakes, I want to have biscuits. I want to go over to the local kebab shop in my area and get a kebab. I want to get a Chinese takeaway at McDonald's. I've been eating this food for the most of my life. I'm 33 now. I can honestly say now, it used to really irritate me when people would give me advice on improving my diet. Because I was very insecure back then. I didn't like people telling me what to do. I wasn't happy with myself. I didn't want to be reminded of how unhappy I was. And I also didn't want to be encouraged to improve. That irritated me. So I continued eating like this growing up. Obviously you guys know if you followed me that I had years of social anxiety, years of self-hate, years of self-sabotaging, years of violence, getting into fights, negative social circles, um, dysfunctional relationships, just a negative life. A negative life where I didn't enjoy being myself and living. So of course, when you go through these things, there's only two options that you have. The first option is, shut the fuck up and continue living how you're living and just live in misery and don't try it. The second option is, of course, to take action, to do something about it. I'm stupid sometimes because it always takes me a lot of suffering to make changes in my life. Some people are different and I've always envied that. Some people are very disciplined, very strict. If they want to improve, they'll just do it. With me, it takes me a while. I have to go through a lot of suffering until I say I can't handle this no more and then I become really dedicated and I achieve. That's been the same attitude in everything I've achieved in my life with women when I was doing the day game, going out and meeting women, teaching men how to meet women, improving, overcoming my social anxiety, sorry, my fashion, even my fashion. When I first started putting videos up, people were giving me criticism, but my fashion wasn't good. I didn't get that affected by it because by then I built my confidence up, but over time, Women said it to me, my family, and I realised it's actually true. I've got to change my fashion. I, I look like shit. I, I look scruffy and I can't be going around dressing like this, especially if I'm a teacher. I've got to take more pride in myself. So I improved my fashion. I started to really like it. Now it's become natural. I don't have to think about it. I always dress good. I always make an effort to look presentable with my fashion. So all these areas are what I call addictions. Addictions are things we do to escape our pain, like bad eating, we dress bad, we talk bad, we're around the wrong people, or the wrong environments, we act wrong, we act bad, and it harms ourselves and it harms other people. So for me, the diet's been the most challenging thing of all. Healthy eating for me, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, has been harder for me than doing public speaking in front of a room full of 50, 60, 70 people. It's been harder for me to improve my diet than getting into the boxing ring and sparring. It's been harder for me to improve my diet than fighting on the street when I was a kid. All of those fears I had, all of those tribal innate fears that we have, they've been easier in comparison to being disciplined about what I put in my mouth, no innuendo, I don't fly that way. <laughs> so, what's this got to do with no fat? What's this got to do with stopping watching points? It's got everything to do with it. Because for many years, and I still am. I was a sex addict. I think most men are, because I didn't lose my virginity till 21. So when I finally lost it, it started to get good and learn how to meet women. You guys call it day game or pick up women you call it. I don't really resonate with those names, but let's, for argument's sake, it doesn't matter what we call it, going out, meeting women, getting laid, sleeping with women. I love doing that. But at the cost of damaging myself, sleeping with lots of women at the cost of losing that relationship with myself, losing my integrity, letting, you know, basically not having any values. As I said before, nothing wrong with having sex. 
I love sex, especially with a beautiful woman. But for me personally, when you're, you know, with different women and cheating as well. So these are all come back to self-control. Self-control is about having the urge to do things, but being able to say, that doesn't morally suit me, that's not ethical. Whether that's with your religious beliefs, just your values as a person, or just your emotional um, system in a sense that not doing what you know is going to harm you in the long run. So, alcohol, another thing. I couldn't stop drinking alcohol. Drugs, I was never really a drug taker. I dabbled in drugs when I was younger, a bit of um, drugs here and there, nothing too heavy. Alcohol, heavy drinking at a certain age in my late 20s. You know, especially with dating women, it went hand in hand. Going on dates, getting drunk, sex with women. Next day, feeling like shit, feeling lost, feeling abandoned, feeling something doesn't feel right. Stop the alcohol. Stop the alcohol, stop the violence. Stop the anger, stop the aggression, stop the jealousy, stop the hate. Stop dressing bad, stop talking bad. Stop treating people bad, start treating people well. It started to get easier, it started to feel more congruent. Of course, getting a mentor. Most people don't see the value in investing in a mentor. Some people do, some people don't. They think it's a waste of money, or it's a waste of time, or they could get it for free. But most people have that attitude don't even put the work in and they usually, in my experience, what I've seen, they stay as they are. So, I've got a very good mentor, because I'm a good mentor myself, but I needed someone more experienced than me. Got a mentor who helped me more with self-control, reminded me of how important self-control is. Because I used to say, oh, it's just porn, it's not that bad. But we say that, we say porn's not that bad, and we say, it's just health unhealthy and it's not that bad, it's just a kebab. And then we talk bad about our friend, we say, oh, I just said a few things, like, and before we know, we're a dishonest person. We've got no integrity, we don't like ourselves, and we're not happy in our life. And we're in denial. We deny that we're not happy, we pretend we play games. We can't lie to ourselves. We can lie to other people uh, on the surface, but it's always back to the self. So, the last two things on my personal development for me were, I would say probably controlling anger, which was linked with maybe sexual frustration or traumas and emotions and being a man, that was linked to pornography. I get angry, get depressed, go on to the pornography to take the, give me some relaxation, but then you feel like crap after. You don't, you know, no wonder you don't trust anyone, you don't trust yourself, or you start doubting women, you have negative thoughts towards people. I stopped the porn. It was difficult at first, now I feel fantastic. When I stopped the porn, I couldn't believe it, and I didn't even plan it, I didn't write, I wasn't going to announce it on YouTube, I wasn't going to tell you guys, I started eating healthy. My body literally is begging me for healthy food. It doesn't mean that once in a while you can't have a takeaway, I'm not going to the extreme, but I started eating healthy. So I don't drink, I do my very best, I don't talk bad about people behind their back, certainly not my close friends or anyone. If I've got something to say, I'll tell you to your face. If I've got something good to say, I'll tell you to your face. If I'm going to talk about you behind your back, it's going to be good. If I feel any negative feelings towards anyone, I keep to myself. I don't say to my friend, I don't like that guy, I don't like a girl, he does this. I haven't got time for that. That's, that's the kids club. That's what gets you into this mess in, in the first place. So, the healthy eating, no fat, has massively helped me. I'm not going to say, I'm not, you know, it hasn't done everything for me, but it's a massive deal. I'm saying it hasn't, in a, in a sense it has, because it's connected with all the other areas of personal development that I've done. So if we link right back to when I first started, I had social anxiety, I couldn't speak to people. I overcome that, I got better at it, and then I started to sleep with women, because that was a fear, I couldn't think I couldn't do it. But that became an addiction, because I went into the wrong angle. If you abuse anything, it can become wrong. So, it's just putting the pieces together. It's just looking at your life. And this is what I do on my six week program when I teach people. This is exactly what my mentor did with me. Help me to help me to see in my life areas where I'm not congruent. Where you're not congruent is areas where you're adding fear in your life, unhappiness, self-hate, betraying yourself, not achieving. Areas where you're congruent is where you're, it's love. Love or honesty or confidence, all these words, same, same meaning. So now I'm fully congruent. I was congruent for a long time, but just a few extra touches. I'm personally enjoying it. I've had a lot of people write, and I appreciate people's comments. People say things like, oh, come on, you're going to relapse. I'm not going to relapse. I'm not going to relapse because I feel too good. I feel fantastic. And I don't mean that to be arrogant. 
obviously there's a possibility I could relapse but I don't plan to, I don't feel to. So other people say to me, well come on man, how are you going to abstain from women? I haven't had sex with women for a year. Why do you think I'm doing all this? I'm talking to myself by the way. Why do you think I'm doing all this stuff? I've got a strong faith in God. I've got a strong faith in doing something massive in my life and helping people do the same. I had to make sure I'm, I was going to say square, straight in every area. Otherwise I can't teach people how to be amazing in their life. Something I've always been doing anyway. I've been great at doing it. I want to get better at doing it better with myself. I want a good relationship with me. I don't want to be running up and down, sweating and panicking and trying to get validation and love from other people and manipulating love. I'm not that sort of person. I don't need that. Loving the self, loving people, any validation is a natural exchange. It's all natural. There's nothing manipulated. That's what my teaching is about. So, what, what has been the benefits from stopping uh, pornography and doing no fat? The benefits has been, I feel fantastic. I feel happy. I feel calm. I feel relaxed. Uh, it's positively affected me in every other life. My teaching is going better. My business is going better. I feel more confident around people. I feel good from day to day. The negative thoughts that I, I used to get them quite really bad. People be surprised by that because I'm a teacher. They have really calmed down. I just feel really connected. I feel really present. And I feel um, I'm even able to handle situations that would usually stress me out. You know, small things like if you go into a shop and they don't have what you want and you say to the guy in the shop, do you have this and he's not very responsive and then you get angry. It's not been phasing me. Or if someone criticizes me and says stuff about me, it's not even bothering me. It's not even, it doesn't, I don't even feel it. As a matter of fact, in a weird way, I enjoy it because it makes me grateful to realize how insecure I used to be towards criticism. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't make me feel the need to get violent. That's how I used to be. So for me, pornography is violent. It's violence watching that. It makes you feel violent. It's not nice. So the other day I went out and I've been speaking to him and now I've started to do it. I'm not doing day game. I'm not going out in the format of trying to get women into bed for sex. I just enjoy talking to women. And if a natural relationship forms from that and we she becomes my girlfriend and we sleep together, fantastic. And I, I believe that's what's in store for me. That's what God will put in front of me. And I think, I don't know if I told you guys this, it's not bragging rights. I just, I want to get across so people know the benefits of doing no fat. It's going to help a lot of people. And you're also going to know the benefits of my teaching and what I'm living. Because I always say, I am a student, that's why I'm a good teacher. I've got everything to learn as I've got everything to teach. I really mean that. I love being a student. I enjoy being a student more than a teacher. That's why I'm a good teacher. I'm doing this stuff with you and all my students that I work on the six weeks program. So I'm going to be really straight with you guys, really open, whoever's watching. I went on a date with a girl a couple of weeks ago that I would have thought would have been out of my league two years ago. And yeah, two years ago I was good. I was picking up a lot of women, but just she was and I don't like judging people and by valuing their looks because I, I don't believe in that stuff. I've been on the earth too long and I'm just too intellectual to fall for all these tricks. But she was fantastic personality, absolutely stunning. And even a, even a voice in my head came up in my head, what should be interesting to go like me for? Sometimes I fall into old stories from the past, I forget. But of course she's gonna like me, I'm very handsome, I'm very attractive, I'm very kind and very honest. Notice I'm talking myself up. It's very important we talk ourselves up. This is what I'm learning from refraining from addictions. Not being arrogant, but being confident of who we are, making other people feel good as well. So that came out of, that was an energetic experience. I wasn't planning to go out and meet women. I went to my local shop near Paddington to get, um, I treat myself once in a while to these waffles. They're very nice, just plain waffles, quite sweet. And they didn't have it in the other shop, so I went up to the further shop. And as I was going in the shop, she was in the aisle. I wasn't thinking anything. I said, excuse me, you have to get past. And I felt this energy, just something about her. The way she felt, I felt I'm very good at feeling energy. I'm sure you guys are the same. So I just told her, I said, You're, it was a genuine compliment. It, was, I didn't, it wasn't tricks. It wasn't compliment and then and stacking with tricks and trying to get a number. I wasn't, I'm not interested in that. I don't need anything from anyone. Within reason, of course. So I complimented her, she loved it, and I walked away. Went back to get my drink and rest of my food. And she followed and continued speaking. She was so flattered. We started talking. I didn't know what was going to happen. We ended up talking outside for 10 minutes, and we sat and drank our stuff. And she asked me the next day, what are you doing tomorrow? Do you want to come for a coffee with me? She asked me, yeah, it was lovely. And I went for a coffee with her. 
and we spoke, we got on well, and we kissed. We kissed. The chemistry was there, and I liked it, and I was honest with her. It was congruent. Not uh, personally, I've done all that stuff in the past, and I'm certainly not judging anyone for going out sleeping with women. That's just not where I'm at. I've evolved, and my thinking's changed, my philosophy. But everything I've learned has been born out of my experiences. So, same with doing a day game and having sex with women and cheating in relationships. That was good for a while, but I thought, I don't want to cheat people anymore, because I don't want people to do it to me. I don't like treating people like this. It makes me feel like they're crap. Same with doing the porn. I don't want to watch porn anymore, because it makes me feel good for a while, and I feel abandoned after. I don't feel good enough or angry. I feel, I start looking at viewing people differently, and I can't be living like that, because I love people a lot, and I like myself. So, I'm starting to learn, when we go to a high level, when we go to a high level of consciousness, we attract the things that we want anyway. Not only do we attract the things that we want anyway, we don't have to manipulate them, we don't have to cheat them. Let's be honest, in most of our society, not everyone, but there's a large proportion amount of people that cheat one another. Even in our conversations, even in our communication, there's so much manipulation going on. When I had a spiritual awakening, I became very aware of that, so I stopped doing that, and I changed that relationship of me, so my relationships with people were straight and honest. So it's very beautiful, very empowering, so I'm getting loads out of it. I've got more energy, my sleep's better, I'm, I'm up early, I'm tidying, I, I just feel so driven, as you can see, I've got so much energy, and um, I feel more confident with women. And I was a confidence coach, I was a dating coach who taught men to be confident, it's made me more confident. And the proof is in the pudding, I attracted a woman that was absolutely stunning. I've dated stunning women in the past before, but this was just, um, I'm talking about personality as well, I'm not just talking about looks, we just got them great. And for a woman, it's happened to me before, I'm not going to deny that, and obviously a lot of my students that I used to teach with the day game meeting women have come code to this, and I know loads of guys, but it's nice, it's been a while for me, I've been out. And um, I'm doing all this um, self-control. I'm not doing it because I want something to prove. I'm not doing it so people pat me in the back. I'm doing this for me. And I'm sharing my experience because I, I know it's going to help a lot of people. And I want to improve in all areas of my life and keep growing. And it's, I can't, it's gave me so much that I can't even explain it. it will, the video will go on too long. It's gave me ice. It's actually helped me as well to heal stuff in the past. I've done most of my healing anyway. My mentor helped me to heal the main bulk of my pain. But, I mean, he's helped me with everything because he's encouraged me. It's all law of attraction. We start attracting all the right things, the right teacher, the right relationships, the right diet, the right health, the right clothes. So I'm getting loads out of it. I'm so grateful for finding it. That's my update. I'll let you know further ahead. If I relapse, I'll let you know, but there's no plans to relapse. And I know myself quite well. Once I'm stuck, I stick to something and I enjoy it and I see the benefits, I won't go back. Because for me, relapsing would be considered me being dishonest and that really, it really pisses me off if I'm dishonest in my life, it, it just annoys me. So um, I've got loads out of it, so I hope you enjoyed it, uh, leave your comments in the box below, let me know your thoughts, let me how, know how you guys are getting on, if you want me to do more videos like this I will alright, I'll see you guys soon, enjoy the process, no fat.